shoulders. Let me ask you this, because you always compare him to Landon Donovan, and sometimes I think you mean that in a positive way, and other times I don't think you mean it in a positive way. Correct. I think you mean it more as like his personality, he's shy. I think Christian Pulisic is a shy guy. When we yeah. do interviews with him, he, he's not super outspoken, he's no, not he's super not. engaged. Um, but what we do see is a guy who is a leader and who people, even if he's not loud, follow. There's a moment where he scores on Memo Cho in World Cup qualifying, he lifts up the shirt. That's not a shy person that no, does that. Not. That's a confident guy. And a guy who always seems to show up in the big games, even when he doesn't play well against Mexico, he scores against Mexico. That is a that is a leader. That is uh, not not to say that he's not like Landon Donovan, but the thing that you're comparing there is, is not the same. He does have a huge personality, Christian Pulisic. It's just not a talking personality. He's gonna. He's 25. He's in mid 20s, and he's already. Tied. Like you're talking about Landon Donovan's record against Mexico. Pulisic's met it already. Yeah. And he's surely gonna pass it. He's surely gonna pass it. I mean, listen. If he's gonna pass Landon Donovan in, in that Mexican folklore, he, he needs to do it in a World Cup like Landon Donovan okay. did. Well. But Christian Pulisic is on. He, he's in a different table right now. You know, when we talk about who's at the mesa, who's at the table, mm -hmm. who can sit at this table. What are you saying, like top dogs in CONCACAF, elite players in CONCACAF? Which is weird because we probably might, wouldn't have said that. Like, we would have put Alfonso Davies in his category, then maybe Christian Pulisic and a few others. But what you see in this performance is a guy who does not need good club form. No. He rocks up in this shirt and he balls out. Yeah, we talk about the best players in CONCACAF all the time, mm -hmm. right? And, and when it comes to the Mexican national team, our, our colleague Mar Mariso Pedrosa, when I talk about Alfonso Davies being the best mm -hmm. player in CONCACAF, he quickly comes with Chucky Lozano. Ask yourself who in this Mexican pool has the most goals on the U.S. men's national team. Do you know who it is? Who? It's Uriel Antuna, who too. Right. Christian Pulisic has cemented himself on a different category when we're talking about this rivalry. He is that man. He is him right now at this moment, and he seems to just grow with the Mexican national team. Like anytime he's not doing well overseas, if he comes back and it's Mexican national, if he comes back, that's a refresher for him, yeah. and he carries that on. He looked spry, he looked fit, he looked fresh, he looked up for the challenge. Yeah, he's also your man of the match. Easy yeah. pick? Yeah, very easy pick. Yeah. I, I mean, if anybody needed to have a big game, um, it would have been Christian Pulisic, and it was. Yeah. In the absence of Tyler Adams, in the absence of having a player that is so vital for your game, your best player, because mm -hmm. I firmly believe he is still your best player, he needs to show up, and that he did. He was massive all game, and just his runs were so strong. This is a guy that oftentimes I look and I'm like, oh, like it, it's frustrating because you're like, he's got these intangibles, the speed, the directness, the arrogance about his game, and oftentimes he doesn't use it. He used everything in that toolkit today. Does he make a case here for most important player? You've often said that that's Tyler Adams before. We saw the U.S. not just survive but thrive without Tyler Adams. I don't know that they could have got through this game or honestly any of the other big games in recent memory without Christian Pulisic. That's a fair shout. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Tyler Adams to me is the most important player in this pool because he's a player so difficult to replace. But you look at Christian Pulisic's big game moments, that's very difficult mm -hmm. to replace. I mean, it's not just the Mexican national team. We're talking about the World Cup, his performances against England. We're talking about the World Cup, his performance uh, against Wales for the mm -hmm. assist. Also performance against Iran with the goal. He's had some massive moments so far. Any goal against Mexico is a massive moment. But when it's one nothing at halftime and you assume that Mexico is going to come out firing, when you score the goal and in that you are him moment in the 46th minute and you kind of shut the door right there, that to me is a power move. And it's so great in the case of Christian Pulisic because it finishes off a beautiful team move. Maybe that one move is like the best soccer we've seen from the U.S. in, I don't know, 12 months, 18 months. That was started from a goal kick. It started from the goal kick. It started all the way from the back. It was a beautiful uh, pattern of play. Mm -hmm. Those are the training ground patterns that you do. Very rarely do they come out in a game of this right. magnitude. It came out in a game of this magnitude. Listen, I knew that with the three center backs for Diego Coca, mm -hmm. they were going to struggle with the wingers. They were going to struggle with the pace of Weston, uh, I'm sorry, with Christian Pulisic, uh, of a Timothy Weah. But I didn't think they would struggle this bad. I didn't think, mm -hmm. I also didn't think that Christian Pulisic and the U.S. men's national team would have this kind of attitude. Yeah. The foot on the throat, you know, they, they keep going, pressing the pedal. It, like, they, they came out flying out of the gates in the second half. It's interesting you said that because I heard you on Ahora Nunca with Mauricio Pedrosa and he was saying that he felt the Americans kind of smelled blood. Yeah. You disagreed with him then, but now you, you agree with him. Um, I don't know if I still... 
I don't know if I agree with that sentiment because in the same in They the same know breath, the pressure Mexico's under. Right. They but know. in the same breath, is it still Mexico versus the U.S., right? How and, come and, one side feels the pressure and the other doesn't then? What are the Americans doing that allows them to well, not because, feel any pressure? Because I, I, I will say this openly. We are the only show putting pressure. Right. We right. are the only ones putting pressure in this American soccer sphere. In Mexico, there are about 100 of us. Right. Okay, per capita. It's just a reality. That's what they live for. Right now, Diego Coca and that presser, I can guarantee you they mm. smell blood. I can guarantee you Diego Coca is sitting Somebody's nervously. asking him if he's going to resign probably in the next Absolutely. half hour if they haven't the reality uh, done is, it already. In this bubble, there are not enough of those mm -hmm. people in the media. Uh, so you gave the men in the match to the obvious choice, Christian Pulisic. I wanted to be a little bit different. Uh, so I want to go to the midfield, because to me, that's kind of a critical area. We talk yeah. so much about Tyler Adams. How are they going to survive yeah, without yeah. him? All the times that we've seen this U.S. midfield without Tyler Adams in the past, they've looked terrible. Even when it's been McKenny and Musa having to do the job. It's Granada or El Salvador. I would like I, I would like to pick them both up. Producer Beto lets me go with Musa and McKinney. I'll give the extra nod to McKinney here. I know the red card hurts looking forward, but it's yeah. an iconic moment. He gets the shirt ripped it off. Is. He bull charges Cesar Montes. He's kissing the jersey. Um, if, if, you, if we believe what you've said, which is that the Nations League doesn't really matter to U.S. soccer, and we're still focused on 2026 and not 2023, then having that moment for Weston McKinney, I think is huge, especially for a guy who, as we mentioned, is not coming off the best club season. So McKinney, Musa for me, obviously Pulisic man of the match, but those guys really deserve some credit. I mean, especially when you had so just many idiotic comments, and, uh, and I know a lot of this is online and whatnot, but that Weston is overweight, Weston doesn't play Well, a lot of well. us come from bitter Leeds fans. No, but that's what I'm yeah, saying. But yeah. a lot of other people buy into this. They buy into this notion of, you know, the, the reason Leeds got relegated mm -hmm. is because these Americans are no good. Weston McKinney's a very good player. There's a reason teams like Juventus and Leeds spend money on Weston McKinney. He is that type of player. But I had my doubts in that double pivot because yeah. he struggled versus Granada, because there was a struggle versus uh, El Salvador. But he's a very good player, and he seems to be up for the moments. Because this isn't the only iconic moment we've seen against mm -hmm. Mexico. We've literally seen Mexican players wrap their hands around yep. his neck. He seems to always be there. They talk about, you know, puffing out your chest, yeah. you know, being that player. He is that player uh, in this type of moment. It, it was a great performance by both. Eunice, Eunice was very good. Yeah, Moose and McKinney deserve a lot of credit. I think part of the answer to that question is also Mexico's midfield was bad, but we'll leave that for when uh, yes. Mauricio Pedrosa shows yes, up in we'll just a little there. bit. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.